Hi everyone, and welcome back to some more Age of Wonders 4 Primal Fury. So, when we last left off, we started sieging a city of our neighbor here, and I think I beat most of his armies at this point, because he's now ranked last in military ranking. It's out of seven, but two of them have been eliminated. I just need to heal up, <laughs> because, yeah, we barely managed to beat his last attack here. I didn't lose anything, but I definitely need to heal up. So we'll just chill over here and heal up. The other army will be close enough in case I get attacked. And they can help if I do get attacked. We are sieging his city. We got four more turns. I'll have to wait. And we do have more dudes coming. They could either go directly for the capital which is a little bit far away. Or I could siege this other city. I suppose we'll see. First, we need to actually get there to begin with. So, let's go. I actually have a pretty damn big army right now. And my income is still pretty damn good. 420 gold per turn and 47 mana per turn now that we picked up Druidic Kerr. Speaking of which, we do have a lot of Imperial, but I'm reserving 800 for expanded governance. And then I guess I'll need some more to actually take direct control of another city. So, okay, 1100 is not actually that much. It definitely is not. What's this? More food. I guess I could use another soul well or two. It's not very good in terms of actual yields, but it will give me more souls. Maybe we can actually build one next to a research post somewhere. Oh, how about the tunneling megalith? Do we have some mushroom provinces here? Not really. Also, I can still excavate over here. Yeah, we can literally excavate. And we should definitely do that. But let's keep this army in one single stack. You never know when someone might come around and attack me. That could happen. Alright, I don't think I want to cast anything right now. No, we're good. Not spending my Imperium at the moment. His ruler is in the void now. He will still attack me again by the time I get to his capital. But we weakened him quite a bit. Not that his army was that strong to begin with. He just had a lot of low tier units. Pact of loyalty with the Bentleton, nice. Alright then, we already have an active trade. Bonded vassalage with Sorcel, okay, good. So I could integrate Sorcel if I wanted to. But I don't think I want this city. It's actually kind of hard to reach that city. Because I can't excavate these rocks. I have to, like, go around. So it's an interesting city. I assume the exit is, like, over here-ish. I don't know where exactly this guy's capital is to the west. Your claimed province has been captured, okay? Yeah, whatever. It's fine. So, what's going on? We got an old shield. I will probably cast this. This is really nice. Plus 5 status resistance is a lot. And it's not just for the shield unit, but also for adjacent friendly units. That's a big buff. Okay, what do we have here? Final banishment. All non-hero corpses on the map are destroyed. For each corpse destroyed, friendly units gain plus 1 bolstered resistance and plus 5 temporary hit points. This is really nice. All friendly units, not just like undead units or anything like that. And all corpses, not just your corpses or just enemy corpses. This is pretty good. Plus 1 bolstered resistance for each corpse destroyed. We'll grab this. It is a little bit expensive to cast. 50 combat casting points. But it's a nice spell. Okay, gold vein found, nice. It is guarded, but it's just tier 1s. Shouldn't be a big deal. 
Yeah, I might lose a unit or two. It's not exactly an impressive stack either. Let's get some extra unit. Oh yeah, and I want my severing golem. We should get one in our highest draft city. Which in this case is gonna be that dwarf city. Goldwall, that's the one. It has the highest draft out of any of my cities, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it does. So how many turns? Three turns. Yeah, that's pretty quick. It's not a cheap unit, but we definitely want one. Uh, how much for upkeep? 60 gold and 7 imperium. Yeah, I expected something like that. Yeah, we'll definitely grab one though. Yeah, yeah, not spending imperium. Thank you very much. Alright, so I think... Oh, yep, he's coming with more. Which, you know, it's not super surprising. I expected as much. Okay, we're still healing, but let's move a bit closer with this stack. With the other hero. Like so. And then one more stack. Like this one looks fine. With the elephant. Maybe actually move in, yeah, move in with the Entwined Protector and the Swamp Troll. And then maybe the Glade Runner too. Instead of all these Bone Horrors, perhaps? A Bone Horror is a good unit, but I want more versatility in that stack. Okay, this is good. And they will go help. Everyone else will stay in the back as potential reinforcements, as backup. There you go. He might attack me, he might not. He's going to lose if he attacks me. So I'm not really worried about that. Here's one extra unit coming to help Bushgrove. Let's just do some more excavations here. But we don't want that gold mine. Still waiting to finish the siege. Uh, here's a storm giant. And we still got 19 recruitment points. So I could grab a Dread of the Psycho. I can grab a Rock Giant, which is not a bad idea. I can get a Swamp Troll. I don't want a White Wolf because it's actually pretty cheap. And it's a pretty good DPS unit. I can recruit my own Dread of the Psycho. But that would be a bit more expensive, if I'm not mistaken. So... Well, okay, let's get the Swamp Troll. A Glade Runner also wouldn't hurt. It's a really good unit. Okay, Swamp Troll, White Wolf. That's how much gold? 255, we got 500. Glade Runner. Can we afford anything else? Yes. The Dread of the Psycho or Swamp Troll. And then we can still spend four more points. We could get a rock giant once we get the money. That seems reasonable. Okay, that actually seems reasonable. This is still a little bit cheaper. I think recruiting a druid of the psycho directly was 200 gold. And this is 150. Yeah, it's 200 gold. So I'm still technically saving 50 gold. Alright, and we'll send this fella somewhere more useful. He can go through here. We have an exit back to the surface up here in the north and he can help killing these neutrals. Yeah, we might as well just build a gold mine here right away. We'll get a unit out of it. It's a tier 2. Okay, that'll do. Works for me. Bounty update. Okay, he will actually try to do the bounty. Wait, what was the bounty again? Wait, was it actually... Wait, was it Spring Scent? <laughs> I forgot what my own bounty was. Can we actually see it? Yeah, yeah. Captured Spring Scent. Let them do that, though. Yeah, we we'll let them do that. I assume this is the army. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the army. We we'll let them do that. We'll go north ourselves. I could take this city on the way, it's only 30 fortification. And vassalize it. I do not have the time to do this. 
So no decline. We are a little bit busy with this war. Thank you very much. Do we have any heroes in the prison? Yeah, we do. Quite a few, actually. Well, these guys have been converted. I can't just keep them in here. I could grant them their freedom. Uh, we would keep their equipment. Do they have anything really good? I think I checked and they did not. Nothing I would need. I mean, the mount is okay, but... Nothing tremendously useful. We leave them there for now. <laughs> we have free gold. Nice. That's called efficient spending, alright? I'm not broke, I'm just an efficient spender. Hey, we're making good gold every turn, so yeah. Yep, he's sieging. So the system actually does work. The AI does not ignore it. Good to see. Alright, well, we'll go in this direction then. Once our turn starts. Go on. Are we there yet? Alright, let's go. What's this? Free city of Quenton, okay. Over here. Well, sure, whatever, it's fine. We're busy, okay. And I'm not giving you a whispering stone. They're needed elsewhere. Alright, let's go. No time to waste. It will take me a few turns to actually get there. It might be best to just ignore this city. Even though it wouldn't take long to siege it, it will take a while to siege Sunholm. 150, 140 fortification, that's a lot. Yeah, it's gonna take a while. Okay, area excavated. And the bear is here, let's just attack and kill this. Give me my gold. I don't think I want to do this manually. Yeah, this is fine. It's just two tier one units. It's fine. We got Hammer of the Chaos Consumer. Okay, 90% chance of inflicting Distracted. Distracted is a pretty nice effect. Alright, we can still excavate over here to the north. So we'll go there. Okay. Well, uh, let's just split these guys a little bit. Here. We'll keep five of them close to this army, and the other five close to the other army. That's the plan. They are the potential reinforcements we might need. We'll probably need them once we start sieging Sunholm. Are we done with this? Okay, two more turns, and I'll just vassalize that one. Reaching the target may take longer than anticipated. Okay, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Aren't you there already? Isn't this the army we were talking about? Maybe he technically hasn't reached it yet, but... I don't know, whatever, it's fine. He's working on it, okay? A hostile army is invading our domain. Okay. Wait... This one? Yeah, that's kind of irrelevant. Hmm. Let's wait and see if they start pillaging something, then I can attack them. They do have two white wolves. We can kill something up in here. Because if I attack them, I'll probably lose a unit or two. We could just get the trade of the psycho in this one, that's not a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, not a bad idea. All right, let's go. Yeah, I'll need like four, five turns to get to Sunholm, and then probably like six turns to siege it. It's gonna be like at least 10 turns before we actually take Sunholm. And then I'll probably want to directly control it and build, okay, they do have a teleporter, that's nice. We can use this teleporter to go back to the Southwestern area. Okay, the bounty has been fulfilled. Nice. Okay. So wait, does that mean he sieged the city? Wait. 
Wait, wait, do you just need to siege it? You don't actually have to capture it? Wasn't the bounty capture, not the just siege? I'm pretty sure it was capture. But he didn't actually capture it? I'm confused what actually happened there. But okay. I'm still gonna ignore this. Yeah, I have better things to do. We're going directly for the capital, alright? I don't want this to take longer than necessary. Definitely not. One more turn. And then we can take the other city. Alright, keep following them. So we want to stay close enough, but not too close. Okay, well, uh, we got some stuff to pick up. And then we can excavate to the north. I could also try to take this altar of the elements, but likely not with this army. It's not strong enough. I highly doubt it's strong enough. Okay, these are units from Rally of the Legions. Let's send them somewhere that's actually useful. Pretty damn good units, too. Alright, and the gold wall. 100 fortification now. We could get some more mana income, which is not a bad idea, yeah? Annex another province. We'll get another unit out of it. There you go. Okay, not the most useful unit I've ever seen. But it'll do. And yet another province to annex. Not a lot of options here. Basically just this one. Alright. Well, works for me, I guess. Let's get one more farm. Yeah, I don't think I want to keep this. Seven mana per turn. That's not worth it, just this bandit. We don't have that much mana per turn left. Alright, let's kill this fella. Hopefully we won't lose too many. And we can accept the auto-resolve. Let's find out. Can I not attack them? Wait, what? Why can I not attack them? What? Wait, is this not the army he's referring to? Okay, that's crazy. Why can I not attack them? I still have movement points left. This is weird. Is this not the city? Wait, wait. All the nest. Right here. What's our status? Oh yeah, we are not at war with this one. Which army was the message referring to? I'm not sure anymore. I thought these were the guys, but clearly not. Okay, alright. Whatever, you can just chill. They're just sightseeing. They're just passing through, am I right? Clearly. Just passing through. Nothing suspicious going on. We should keep an eye on this army here. What's this? A quest? I suppose we could accept? 60% chance! Okay. All cities gain 35 stability. 40% chance to fail. Bushgrove loses 60 to gold per turn. Okay, that's a bit too much. I don't want to lose that much. I suppose we'll accept the quest. Oh, it's right here. Well, I really don't want to go back now. We can send some other units to take care of that. You know, like... These guys. Oh wait, I can actually take a shortcut here. What? What the heck? <laughs> oh yeah, teleporter, right, okay. Yeah, let's send all these. They can handle it. Yep, but I leave some like basic defenses in Bushgrove. There, uh, the Severin Golem can join that stack. Okay. Where was it again, exactly? Right here. Okay, yep, yeah, we'll take care of that. We got final banishment. 
one more research cycle. Dragon attack. That's the siege project. I think I want this. Units defending the city take 26 fire damage. Fires are randomly added. And the units defending the city have a base 90% chance of it becoming burning. I guess we could grab that. It's not that impressive, but alright, let's grab that. There is a monster then over here. But again, not for this army. We're busy. We're going for the capital. Before he gets a chance to rebuild too much, you know? We wouldn't want him to do that. We acquired some Archon blood. Yeah, not spending my Imperium just yet. Uh, here's the Golem. Or giant, rather. Excavate this. There might still be something to kill over here, and also over here. Avernos? Yeah, keep this over here for defense. We should be done with the siege now. Okay, attack. Uh, auto resolve should hopefully be fine. <laughs> yep, okay, nobody died. Fire Wyvern is now elite. Looking good, the Bone Horror is Soldier, Gortask Mage Shark is Elite, one of our heroes leveled up, two of our heroes leveled up. Very nice. Let's level them up then, shall we? What can you guys get? One more level to get another signature skill. So this is our support hero, but we already have Spur to Action. So... Let's get Sprint. Okay, Sprint is always useful to have. So we can get that. Another hero. This guy is melee. He has Assassinate and Restoration. Wait, what's Master of Disruption? 60% chance of inflicting Disrupted. Okay. Well... I guess we could get started on support. He has killing momentum already. So I don't need anything in warfare unless I specifically want it. Let's get started on a support here. He's only level 9 right now. Okay, we'll get started on support. I'll still take a restore. Restore can definitely come in handy. In some situations. There you go. Okay, as for the city... We'll just vassalize it. I'm not going to spend 800 Imperium and then 200 extra on top of that just to take this city. We'll just vassalize it. I have no need to directly control this one. Now, okay, where do we go with these guys? I don't think I need them near the capital. I could siege Spring Scent myself, because even if we take out the capital and kill the ruler, this city will still be hostile or at best neutral. It might still be useful to vassalize it. So I think we should do that. Unless our friend here does it for us. But that doesn't seem likely at the moment. Yeah. Okay, let's stay close enough to each other. And you guys, you're just guarding Avernos, so... Just chill. We finished the academy. 555 knowledge. How's our gold? I still need one more unit from Rally of the Legions. I could reinforce my vassals, but I don't think I really want to do that. <laughs> Let's wait one more turn and get the rock giant. Mint, 170. Yeah, I think that can wait a turn or two. Yup. I need that gold for the giant, okay? We improved our status with Bendleton. Alright. Yeah, I'm not sure if this message was talking about this army or what. It doesn't matter. I don't actually see anything hostile. I'll attack it when I do. Oh, oh, yep, okay. It's neutral now. Okay, he attacked me with like three units. Okay, bro. That's Ormbor. Alright then. 
I guess he had a death wish. Yeah, again, like I said, I'm not attacking Ormbor. I have better things to do. We can take it on the way back if we really want to. But I just want to take out his throne city as soon as possible. That's the goal. Okay, we got some treasure here. Nightmare Mount. Hey, that's actually not bad. I might even use that. Who is actually using a mount right now? This person, a dire bear mount. Okay. Plus 40% damage against units in defense mode. Intimidating aura. I think I prefer nightmare mount here, actually. Yeah, I don't like this. Reducing enemies' morale can be a really good way to win a fight. And also, the Nightmare Mount looks pretty nice. You cannot use a mount because of your weapon. You also cannot use a mount. Wait, what are you using again? A cold Staff of Healing. Okay, right, that's fine. And you could use the bear. I think that's the only tier 2 mount I got now, the bear. I just need to wait one more turn. Okay, that's fine. Let's keep moving. Get that quest done. Right, these are potential reinforcements we might or might not need. Okay, that's a proper siege, six turns. Okay, anything else to excavate? Or are we done? One more. Okay, we're almost done. There might still be something useful over there. So where do we go from here? Yeah, I don't think I need my entire army near Sanholm. I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. I think it would be a huge overkill. So we'll go do something else instead. Yeah, we'll go do something else. I could just get started on attacking this other dude. I could still reveal the entire map using Imperium. I'm just not sure if I wanted to spend that Imperium. You know? Speaking of Imperium, uh, let's just get plus one city cap already. Because I'm going to use that plus one city cap anyway. And we'll get another hero in 10 turns. I could speed that up. It might be worth speeding it up once we get closer, because it gets cheaper the lower this turn count is. So that might actually be worth doing once we get closer. For like 200 or something like that. We shall see. Okay, let's get another unit from Rally. I think I'll just grab the Rock Giant. It's kind of a tough one, because the Swamp Shoal is a pretty nice unit, and it's way cheaper than the Rock Giant. It's just a different kind of unit, it's a battle mage. While this is kind of a hybrid unit. He has an AoE, he has a ranged attack, and he has a charge. The throw boulder has 90% chance to inflict slow. He does cost Imperium, so does the Swamp Troll. Now I'm having some second thoughts. Because my Imperium income is not that great anymore. I could actually just grab an Entwined Protector. This unit is the actual GOAT, thanks to Healing Sub. And he's so cheap. What the heck, let's just get an Entwined Protector. I pretty much won that fight in the previous episode, thanks to an Entwined Protector. It wasn't just that, but it was definitely a factor. Let's finish the Wizard Tower, so we'll get more Imperium from that. Should have built that earlier, probably. And now, do we want to cast an enchant here? Yeah, probably null shield. I did want that. It won't cost me that much, and I definitely want this. Okay, null shield it is then. Carry on. A spring sand. Right, declared war on me, that's fine. My bounty has failed because they didn't actually capture the city. An army of Old Nest was found invading our domain. Yeah, so it was this army it was talking about. It's just that I can't attack them because I'm not actually at war with that city. And also, we're losing gold now. Too many expensive units. It's okay. 
I mean, I can always dismiss a few of them. Or improve my gold income. We want to go bankrupt, don't worry. I think that the giant is really expensive. And also, yeah, the Severing Golem. 60 gold, yeah, per turn for this guy. It's a really, really expensive unit. There's the dragon attack. Now we can get another tome. So one more tier 4 tome and then we'll get a tier 5. Can I not sort by tome tier? Here. Yes, yeah, so we have 9 shadow and 8 nature. So I could go for tome of the eternal lord or for tome of goddess of nature. Tome of Goddess of Nature, I used this one before. I never used the Tome of the Eternal Lord. What does this do? Battlefield Reanimation. All friendly undead units come back to life with 50% of their total hit points. This would be good in a fight with a lot of uh, bone golems. These are pretty good units. It would also be really good with the major race transformation that turns everything you have into undead, but I didn't use that one. But that would be great with that. Summons a full army of low tier undead, okay. The Curse of the Reaper has the chance to instantly kill the target. Wait, oh wow. This is a unit enchantment for support units and battle mage units. And it gives them Curse of the Reaper. Base 60% chance of an enemy unit dying, non-hero unit. If a non-undead unit dies this way, it transforms into an undead decaying zombie. If resisted, the unit sustains 45 frost damage that ignores resistance. That seems crazy good. Withering Mist. Sustain 15 frost damage, 90% chance of becoming blind, and 90% chance of becoming weakened. Okay, so out of these four spells, I actually like true death magic the most. I really like that. Master hero skill, eternal one. When this hero unit is killed in battle, after two turns, it comes back to life with 35% of its total hit points. Can be used any number of times, holy crap. Does not function if all other units are dead. This is really good. That's a master level warfare skill. This is really, really good. I like that a lot. Okay, I like this a lot. And I mean, we're not deciding right now. I'm just checking the options. These are the two tier 5 tomes we can choose between because there's no way... I'll get 8 affinity in any other affinity, you know? What do we pick now, however? I don't really need the affinity bonus anymore because we already reached 8. So I just need to pick something that looks interesting from our point of view. So I did use Tom of Nature's Rat in the past, several times even. And don't get me wrong, the Horned God is an absolutely amazing unit. I freaking love this guy. But since I used this multiple times before, I'd rather go for something else. I think I used the Tomb of Oblivion at least once. I vaguely remembered summoning a living fog before. I vaguely remember that. And I remembered the insanity effects. Tomb of the Reaper. So this is a tier 5 mythic unit that can instantly kill units it attacks and empowers your undead. Finger of death. Base 60% chance of any target non-hero unit dying. Yeah, and the 45 frost if it fails. And greater corpse consumption. Plus 40 temporary hit points and plus 3 strengthened. And it does not require any skill points. This is crazy good. That's insane. Harvest population. Okay, so this gives you plus 30 souls income, but minus 20 city stability and the city no longer gains any food. So this is good on a city where you no longer care about getting any further growth. 
plus 40 souls. At the start of the battle, gain 6 decaying zombie units. That's a siege project. All enemy units gain soul bound. Free fortification damage. That's a pretty decent siege project. Marked for dead. Loses 10 morale. Sustains 15 unblockable physical damage and has a decaying zombie spawn adjacent to them. Is afflicted with visions of death. Okay. Greater reanimation. Resurrects target non-hero unit. As a cropped soul if not undead. Okay. With 100% of his total hit points if undead. Right. Okay, interesting. So what about Tomb of the Stormborn? I think that's one of the newer ones. If not literally the new one in Primal Fury. I would have to double check. But it's definitely one of the DLC tomes. Don't remember if it's Primal Fury or otherwise. I essentially never used it before. Offensive skirmisher unit whose attacks arc to other enemy units. Okay, I like that idea. Throw Storm Trident. That is a lot of damage. 32 base damage here with this. That is pretty nice. That is pretty nice. I don't really care about this. City structure. Yeah, we don't even have any coastal cities, so I don't care about that. All units become wet for three turns. Okay. Up to two random enemy units sustain 10 lightning damage. And the base 90% chance of becoming electrified. Okay. Alter strain to swamp if land. Okay. Double the base resources from coastal province improvements. Major race transformation. I don't need another race transformation. We already used one and we can't have a second one. So I like this Yonid, but I don't really like anything else from this. I think I'll pass. As much as I like this Stormbringer Yonid. No. Tom of Paradise. So Gaia's Chosen is a great major race transformation, but again, we already used a major race transformation, the dragon one. So obviously I'm gonna pass on that. I might just go for Tom of the Reaper. We could get the Reaper and uh, what else out of this? Soul Siphons is a decent siege project. Maybe marked for that. I would definitely like to get the Reaper. That's a pretty damn nice unit. Not sure if I care about the greater reanimation that much. I guess it would work on the Reaper. Is this an actual undead unit? I can't open like the full detail screen actually. I assume it's an undead unit. Greater corpse consumption. Oh, right, this is a master hero skill in battle magic. Right, so since this is in battle magic, I only have one hero who could pick this up. But it's a nice skill. It doesn't require any skill points, which makes it really, really good. What was that other uh, hero skill I was looking at that was really good? Not this. Wait. Oh, it was in the tier 5 tome, right? Yeah, it was. We could always just pick Tom of Nature's Wrath and get the Horned God, but I just don't want to pick stuff I already used multiple times in the past. Not really. And I mean, Tom of Paradise is still decent, even if we ignore Gaia's Blessing. All friendly Yonis gain plus 15 morale. All enemy Yonis have a base 90% chance of becoming distracted. It's kind of a tough choice. What about Tom of Oblivion? Sustained City spell. Debuff spell. Target non-hero unit dies. After two turns, they come back to life with 75% of their total hit points and are inflicted with insanity. Okay. At the start of each battle, all units have a base 90% chance of becoming stunned for two turns. Oh yeah, I remember using this spell before. 
This is a really, really good spell. This is a great spell. Conjure the Devouring Void. I'm really torn about this. We'll get the Reaper, okay? Let's get the Reaper. Mostly because the Siege Project is decent, the Reaper unit is really good. And the greater reanimation might actually still come in handy anyway. So wait, if you use this on like a dead tier 1 unit, you still get a tier 3 corrupt soul out of it, I assume. Seems like a pretty good trade. Alright, Tomb of the Reaper. I know that took a while, but there you go. These were the options. Okay, let's grab the Reaper, shall we? Yep, get the Reaper. There. Alright, keep moving. We're almost there. Just stay close to each other because there's a good chance we'll get attacked as we approach the city. But we do want to start sieging it ASAP. Definitely. Okay, we also got the Null Shield coming in one turn. I would also like to move the Severing Golem into my main army. Where was that quest? Right here. That's the army we're supposed to kill for the quest. I assume I don't have to do it with an actual hero. I could. Speaking of heroes though, what we could do is take over this altar of the elements. This adds the Phoenix unit to the Rally of the Legions. And I definitely wouldn't mind that. We are basically right there. I don't think I even need to change my army. Like this army can probably handle it. It's a pretty damn strong one. The only thing I could potentially do is just move either one of the heroes or the golem. But there's no real need to do that. Yeah, let's just go right away. And we can move this golem, the giant, into that army. Instead of something else. Instead of the river troll, I think. I would like to keep the bastion, I think. Yeah, instead of the river troll. That sounds good. I'll keep one stuck here for defensive purposes. So there you go. Can we move out? Yes, we can. There you go. Nice. That's a nice replacement right there. Very nice replacement. Okay. You guys can probably just chill up here. Wait, did he give up on this siege? I suppose I could siege it myself? It's a neutral city now and they will harass me. So maybe we should just take over and vassalize it. It is not a bad idea in the end. It's actually not a bad idea. A treaty has expired. I do not want to create a new bounty. Thank you very much. I'm good, thanks. Oh, cannot afford declarations upkeep. Right. Well. I mean, that's fine. We're just losing four gold per turn. It's not a big deal. I could cancel the soul spell to get 30 gold back. If I really want to. I had it active basically since the beginning of the game. I could cancel it. But I mean, 30 gold per turn is not that big of a deal. But I could cancel it and build a bunch of soul walls. I could do that. We're still fine in terms of gold. I wouldn't worry about it. I can always get plus 30 instantly, is what I'm saying. I don't even have to dismiss any yogis to do it. Oh yeah, and we finished casting. So that gives us the Null Shield. Before we start the siege. Yeah. I assume we're done with that. Yeah, it's ready. Let's go. There you go. Okay. What's this? Your vassal is under siege, really? Come on, bro. I can go help them, I suppose. First, let's take this altar of the elements, shall we? That is literally why I'm here. Yep. That is why I'm here. And I suppose I could go help Arcadia after that? This siege will be done by the time I get there. So, that's a bit awkward, but alright. That is a bit awkward. 
Okay, let's get this quest done. Uh, I suppose I can wait one more turn still. Attack with everything. Here you go, buddy. And get our siege started. On the next turn, from the looks of it. I assume he rebuilt his army, but I don't expect anything overly dangerous. He didn't have enough time to rebuild everything. I will keep some basic defenses in my capital, you know, just in case something suddenly shows up. Somehow. It could happen. We could also claim one of the adjacent province here. Actually, no, we couldn't. I could have found a city, but I have no interest in doing that. Okay, we got the monolith. How about some gold? One of the cities could build a mint. Which one was it? It was one of them. Might have been Avernus. I think it was Avernus. Or, wait. Was it actually Bushgrove? Yes, Bushgrove. So we'll get the mint. For some more gold. Alright. Uh, keep on merchandise. Production. What do you want? He's ready to negotiate. Hey, this whole operation was your idea. A screw diplomatic approach. Oh, with Bendleton. I mean, yeah. We are working on Bendleton. Yes, yes, it will. Let's go. So once we take Stanholm, we can use the teleporter to go back here and then go after this dude to the west. But there's still Obsidiax, who's hiding right here underground in the corner. That might be the most annoying city to reach. Yeah, I think that's going to be the most annoying one to reach. But we'll worry about that later. Let's get this siege started, shall we? Let's go. There, okay. Let's go. This will probably take a while. Oh, and hold on, I'm going to need the money. Whoops. You know what? Let's actually cancel this soul spell. Let's actually cancel it and reclaim our 30 gold, shall we? Yes, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm going to need some money. Maybe we can get some money for a trade right now with our friend here. Are you a buyer? I could sell some items, perhaps? Do I have a lot of them? Yeah, I have so many items. Are you buying? Sure, 60 gold is fine. How about some resources? Magic materials. It should only tell you which ones you have multiples of. We have Fireforge Stones, Archon Blood, Silver Tongue Fruit, Rainbow Clover. Is that the four listed ones? I think it might be, actually. Well, anyway, is he buying? Okay, Fireforge Stone. 15 gold per turn. Is he out of actual gold? I guess I'll take this deal. It's still a nice deal, all things considered. Magic materials again. Okay, yeah, no, I just need the money. Will I have to wait one more turn or are we fine? Let's check. We got 200. It might be fine. Yeah, 13 turns with no siege projects. This will take a while regardless. Yeah, it will take a while. Okay, I can do it with exactly 200. Or 150. Undermining the walls. Will it make a difference? Hold on. Actually, it's both plus two. I could do headlong assault, but I'd rather not, because then every attacking unit will take 20 physical damage at the start of the fight. Damages the support defense structure in the city. Okay. Right, let's go for this one here. Nine turns. It's not going to get much better, all right? We're doing 16 fortification damage per turn. It'll have to do, okay? It'll have to do. 
Nine turns is not fast, but it's gonna be fine. Let's get this quest done really quick. Just fight them. No need for spells. Go on. Okay, one carry on bird died, I don't really care. Let's keep our souls for now. I think we'll be getting another hero soon, in seven turns. I might actually spend that Imperium to get another hero, we shall see. Oh yeah, speaking of Imperium... Okay, I could lose 10 alignment and get 333 Imperium. Nail his body to the gates, we already did that before. We can do it again. Yeah, let's do that. We're still good. We are the good guys here, alright? 1.1k Imperium. Yep, nice. Okay, let's shuffle a few Yonis here. Because I want the strongest Yonis to be under the actual hero here. So definitely the Golem. That's a no-brainer. Definitely the White Wolf. We can move out the Dryad, move out the Steel Shaper. Dread of the Psycho. Swamp Troll, White Wolf. And do we replace the Slither? Maybe. I think it might be fine. I could replace him with the Glade Runner. Yeah, okay. Let's replace him with the Glade Runner. There, okay. So that's going to be the hero stack. Looks good. Now we can go do something useful. Here's another hero. What's this? Oh yeah, Ancestral Warden. Yeah, Spring Sand has 135. I don't really want to bother with that. I think I'll just go directly west at this point. Where's the closest teleporter? Might be this one, actually. I don't think our vassal has a teleporter. I think that's the one. Is it? Can I not, like, tell what his route is? What on earth? Oh, yeah, no, the closest teleporter is this one. Underground. Yep, yep, yep. That's where we're going. Let's go. I guess I could go help Arcadia on the way. Because it's probably going to fall. Okay, these are reinforcements in case we get attacked. And there's a decent chance we will. Let's stay far enough, though. Because what's potentially possible is that he will attack the stack with reinforcements and then some of my actual army stacks will join the fight. And my army involved in the fight will not be as big as I would have wanted it to be. So we don't want that to happen. What do you mean orders required? Well, they could go help Arcadia. I just need to embark. Oh wait, no, uh, we were going to attack the Altar of the Elements, so let's do that. Yep, let's do that. Attack. Risky battle. I can cast a spell before engaging. 596 mana. That's a lot of mana. Bolstered status resistance. We'll be fine. Okay, we'll be fine. Frost Dragon. Fire Dragon, Two Spiders, Winter Fairy, and Summer Fairy. That is a pretty nasty army. These dragons are pretty dangerous. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I will likely have to do it manually, though. Let's find out. Okay. I lost this Storm Giant. I'm not entirely okay with that. I'm not okay with that, no. He was expensive, alright? We'll do it manually. When a red dragon has draconic rage, all attacking units have 90% chance to suffer burning every turn. When a blood dragon does, all attacking units have 60% chance to get frozen. Okay. Might get dangerous. Tempestus smash. Right, so this works in a straight line. Good to know. 
We let them come close. Yep. There's a decent chance I lost something. Okay, we don't have mana unchained. We'll want to use that. Probably on the next turn. Yep, on the next turn. Not right now. Hey, wait, is it centered around me? Okay, it's fine. Let's go. Okay, good. You go here. Then we can... Oh, wait, whoops. Undo. Okay, no, yeah, it's not centered around me. Because some of them are. Right here. Let's go. That will help. Now I just need them to come closer. Six tiles range. We are just slightly out of range for that one. Alright. This is going to be a bit of a choke point. Okay, let them come. Not using any spells yet. Here comes the dragon. Okay, frozen. I can dispel myself, actually. Might be worth doing. I have more than one way to dispel myself. I can do it with a restore, which might not be a bad idea. Firebomb. I don't think the fire dragon cares about that. Plague spores. Yeah, these dragons are going to be a problem. I think this is my best move, actually. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I think it is. Hold on, though. Let's not do it yet. We can try to use Psycho's End on one of the dragons, but we have to damage it first. Buff up. I can also debuff one of them. What's the range on this? Okay, let's debuff this one. Yeah, I'm debating whether to dispel the giant. I probably should. Oh yeah, a uh, Fire Blessing will dispel him for free. Nice. There you go. No longer frozen. Actually, yeah, he's still frozen. I thought that was the only negative effect it had. Apparently not. Okay. We do have spare to action. Yeah, I'm not too convinced about this. I can dispel it with Purifying Flame, but that's not really worth doing. Not really. And with Fire Embrace. No, Fire Embrace does not dispel. Just Purifying Flame. I don't think that's worth doing. Yeah, that's not really worth doing. Let's see how much damage we can do here. Okay, let's see. We'll focus on one dragon. If we can kill one dragon, that would be a big help. But we'll find out. Don't go into Mela yet. Okay, pretty good damage here. Let's go. There's a decent chance we'll kill it. I could also try assassinate, but that's a bit risky. Because I would have to move through here. That is a bit risky. I don't think I want to do that. I can use Psycho's End, and then if it fails, use Spur to Action to get another action on the Druid. Or, okay, I can actually attack it with a Magic Blast, then use Spur to Action, and then attack it again and kill it. Maybe I won't even need Psycho's End. Okay, I think I might not actually need Psycho's End to begin with. Yeah, no, we won't need it. Just kill it with the Bastion. I'll take 11 retaliation damage, but that's fine. Okay, he wasn't as tough as I anticipated. Now, we still have the hero. I still have a few options. I can still get my giant back right now. Maybe. This is 4 tile range, so I could stand here. And then he could attack the other dragon. I obviously don't want him to get killed. That would be bad. That would be pretty bad. I can't use both. Actually, yes, I can use spare to action. 
and also restore. Do we want to use Spur to action right now? That is a good question. Not necessarily. Let's keep it for the next turn. Let's actually keep it for the next turn. So, spiritual healing. Wait, no, hold on. Uh, restore. Yep, okay, restore, let's go. This will also give it regeneration. But I mostly care about the dispel, obviously. Now, okay, we can charge. 31 damage. I can lightning strike. Or I can use this Tempest to smash. A simple charge seems like the best option right now. Yeah, actually seems like the best option. Do I want to charge like this? Maybe. I could also charge one of the fairies. The only problem is that I'll get flanked if I do that. Or I could just back up. Or I could stand over here. I have a few options. I'm a little bit worried about how much damage the fairies will do to me. Yeah, it will probably be a lot. Let's check the fairy real quick. What's his resistance? Okay, five. Slightly higher than the bastion. Attack the dragon. There. Now, I can still summon a spider. Right here. Next to both of the fairies. Let's go with that. And, oh wow, I can almost kill one of them. That was really close. I almost killed one of them. It might kill itself with an attack of opportunity. Okay, here comes the dragon. Slowed, frozen. Now it might be worth using the big dispel, purifying flame, maybe. Only one unit is actually frozen, though. Right? No, two units are frozen. So it might actually be worth using it, potentially. <laughs> Look at this damage, that's crazy. Glade Runner is such a good unit. And he got nerfed a while ago, because Tracker's Mark used to be even better than this. Okay, so probably back up. And then attack. Okay, good damage. We can definitely take out the dragon right now. Yeah, I can do it with a charge. Okay, just do it with a charge. Smack. Alright. So do I want to use Purifying Flame? I'm not totally convinced it's actually worth using this right now. Seems like a slight overkill. I would dispel two freezers. Heal for a bit. I could also heal the Bastion if I move him here. So, okay, now that might be worth doing. Let's go with that. We'll move the Bastion. Attack this tier for Spider. And then we can cast Purifying Flame. There. That's decent value. Okay, that's actually decent value. Can we kill the spider? Perhaps. Maybe we can, yes. We could also try to assassinate it. Seeing how it's an instant action. Alright, let's see how much damage we can actually do. Yeah, okay, that's basically it. What's the chance to assassinate? 40%. Hey, might as well try, right? Nope, resisted. Okay, it's fine. You tried. I can still use spare to action. I think on the archer, perhaps. That might be the most damage I can do. Uh, kind of hard to tell. Hold on. Can we check without doing that? Uh, well, not really. I can check my base damage. It might be the archer, though. Look at all these damage bonuses we have. Or the swamp troll. That's close. The archer actually seems better. This is how much damage? 23, 5, 27 times 3. So 27 damage with poison bolts. And with the bow, 23, 5, 29, yeah? So the bow is a bit better in theory.
I should be close enough here for like 90%. Effective range should be fine. Oh yeah, what's the defense and the resist? Slightly lower defense than the resist. Okay. The archer then. Alright, let's go. Now we can finish it off with the hero. Yup. Bye bye. And we got a zombie. Okay, let's move here, then kill the fairy. We'll be in melee range of the other fairy, and that's our turn. How on earth did Auto Resolve lose that giant? Probably because they just bum rushed the enemies. That's what it does. It is what it is. Okay, you're dead. We're almost done. We barely even took any damage here. Yep. We're basically done. He is about to die. Come on. Done. There you go. We got a level up on the hero. We'll be able to pick another signature skill. I think I'll pass on this. Uh, okay. 532 Imperium. Wow. You gain the Golden Golem unit. So I like the Golden Golem because of this mechanic here. Chance to inflict Gilded. Which basically gives you gold. If enemy gets the Gilded debuff, you get gold for like uh, every tier of the unit if you kill it. So it's a nice unit. Ask the defeated Frost Dragon to join sides. 100% success. So I would gain a Frost Dragon unit. Is that better than the Golden Golem? I don't know. The Golden Golem could be nice to make some extra money. But 532 Imperium is a lot. Corruption Orb. Tier 3. 90% chance of inflicting misfortune. That is also really nice. Misfortune is a really powerful effect because fumble chance is minus 50% damage. Man, this is a tough one. This is a really, really tough one. I can get some pretty good units myself right now. So, as much as I like the Golden Golem for extra gold, I think I'll take the Imperium. Because there aren't a lot of ways to gain Imperium quickly. It's mostly through events like this. And obviously, building up your front city and stuff like that. Your wizard tower. But if you want a really quick boost of Imperium, it's mostly events like this. So I'm gonna take the Imperium. It won't go to waste, okay? I'm taking the Imperium. And now we can actually annex this. There you go. And this will add the Phoenix to Rally of the Legions. The Phoenix is a pretty nice unit, too. It's definitely a nice unit. Because of this fiery rebirth. I can't get one yet, but we'll get one during the next rally. Yep. Alright then, well, that was a fun fight. However, that's going to be the end of this episode, so thanks for watching all the way to the end, I appreciate it. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.